Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite podcast, Spilling the Tea Leaves. My name is Michelle. You can find me online at rememberlovehealing.com, and you can also find me on Instagram, which is at rememberlove. I also have a Twitter, um, but I barely use the thing, but if you want to follow me anyway, it is at the Remember Love. and we also have Patreon. Yes, yes. Um, if you've heard the episode, previous episode or the episode before that, it's not something I imagined starting, but here we are with Patreon. I would love for you to support me and follow me if I've ever provided any sort of value to you or to your daily life. Please, please, please. Um, I'm begging at this point. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> please go over to patreon.com slash remember love healing. We have super cool stuff uh, available for those that sign up. And it also gives you access to our community and our discord. Um, yeah, it is a definite project and passion of mine to create a community of a like-minded individual so we can talk about anything and everything, ask questions, find teachers who are willing to help teach us, find those who are willing to learn, and all that fun stuff. Let's see what else. Just getting the news out of the way so we can just right into jump right into the episode. Oh, big thing. So on December 21st, I am offering a micro crystal healing session. If you go on my website, you can find it. And it's, I'm going to, well, once I get started on the episode, you're going to see how it all ties in together and why I highly recommend you participate in the session. If you log into, or if you go to my website, Remember Love Healing, there is a little sign up sheet where you can get a free guide on crystals and chakra health. And then I give you an extra, extra, extra special gift. And I promise you it's going to be totally worth your time because it's going to save you a whole lot of money. All right. (sighs) December 21st. Let me get a drink of water first because I'm going to be talking. All right. December 21st. If you have been watching, even mainstream media has picked up on it. If you've been on social media, if you've been just browsing the internet, if you've been even been on Reddit, there is a lot of chatter about December 21st. Some people think that the Mayan calendar is set to end on December 21st, which by the way, the Mayan calendar is a circular. It doesn't end. It just keeps going and going. So I don't know why they keep saying it ends, but this happened in 2001. It happened again in 2012. Every so often somebody claims the Mayan calendar said it was going to end. And my ancestors have not told me it was going to end, so I'm hoping that they will enlighten me. Like, yo, it's going to, it's happening. But no, it's been quiet. Um, the There's an evangelist pastor named Paul Begley who also claims the world is going to end on the 21st, which also happens to be his birthday. So what does that say? Other people are saying that Jesus is going to come back. Um, okay, cool. I have some questions. He's going to be seriously disappointed in what we have been doing for the past few hundred years. And, oh, this one's my favorite one. Um, There's a a big, (laughs) this is, this is awesome, actually. There's a big, uh, um, what do you call it? Like this hashtag or like this idea that on December 21st, black people will discover their superpower, which I think is totally cool. Um, and I have some black in me, so like, do I get some superpower? Cause that would be nice. Um, do I get to pick my superpower? Uh, some people think that their, your DNA somehow is going to be activated on this particular day, like quiet parts of your DNA. I don't know. Um, it doesn't help that December 21st is also sandwiched between two eclipses plus a meteor shower that started December 4th fourth and it's set to end the 21st Um, but it can only be seen in certain areas uh, probably near the equator on clear skies Um, so what is it okay so what is happening December 21st when it comes to the stars Jupiter and Saturn are set to align with both planets appearing closer this is called the great conjunction 
The last time this happened was in 1623. And I believe this is what they also refer to as the Star of Bethlehem. So it was uh, also when Jesus was born before that. And December 21st also happens to be the beginning of winter solstice. Plus the eclipses, plus the meteor shower, plus a bunch of other stuff that's happening in the skies. And people are just freaking out. They're freaking out. So what I'm about to say is purely my opinion. Uh, it's my opinion. I'm not here to, I'm not speaking negatively or ill about anybody. Everybody chooses to live their life how they want to be. But if you are nervous or scared, if somebody is teaching you or trying to convince you to be nervous or scared for the day of December 21st, no try not to listen to that person there's so many spiritual teachers spiritual gurus all these things that are are these people who are pushing this agenda of fear onto people and also and it's always attached with a i know more than you attitude and this kind of goes back to the reason a lot of us left or has kind of strayed away from traditional religion because there's all there was this person especially in christian religion saying if you don't do what i am telling you to do if you don't follow these rules in this book then you are going to be left behind when the rapture comes or you are going to be those few that end up in the pits of hell and that's not, that's a, that's a fear that you're driving fear into people. And when you drive fear into people, they become stagnant. Your energy becomes stagnant. Your energy becomes low and all the positive things that you can be doing, all the positive things that you can be sharing and spreading and things that could be coming your way all of a sudden stop because you're scared. Your motivations are based on fear. And when your motivations are based on fear, your actions are not going to be fruitful and they're not going to be fruitful in a positive way. So what a lot of these teachers are saying is that if your frequency isn't high, if you haven't been doing your meditation, if you're not good with source, if you're not connected with yourself spiritually, if you're not um, doing, if you're not vegan, if you're not doing these very specific things, then you are sort of going to be left behind and you're going to be, you are going to shift into negative behavioral patterns starting the 21st. And that's not the case. That's not going to happen. So if you're fearful or if somebody has put in this idea that something bad is going to happen to you or something bad is going to happen in general, that's not, that's, that's not it. That's not it. And I can tell you that all of you have gone through major events when it comes to the stars that you probably didn't even know, that you probably completely miss, and you've come out unscathed. Unscathed. Is that how you say it? So one of my issues when you ask, when you tell people, well, if you're not vibrating at a certain frequency or if you haven't been paying attention to the signs or whatever it is, you're kind of lumping everybody in together. And that negates what it is to be, to, it, it negates the idea of what we're doing in this journey, in this experience. We are all souls having a human experience. Some of us, are, it's like a train. Some of us are still at the train station. Some of us have already gotten reached nirvana, reached the point of completion. And when, when we die, we can come back and help other people or whatever, whatever your idea of what the afterlife is. Some of us have just left the station. Some of us are not even at the station. We're still at home getting our shit together. Some of us aren't halfway through the trip. Like we're all in different stages. So to demand that people 
we all have to be vibrating at the certain frequency or else we're just it's going to be a shit show and and the world is not going to shift as a collective and we're all just going to fucking die that's that's not that's not it that's not where it's at that's not what is happening so just calm down calm down what is actually happening what is actually happening is a shift that we have already been seeing since the beginning of 2020. 2020 is a crapshoot. I mean, 2020 has not been positive, has not been good for a lot of us. Um, 2020 has come with a lot of challenges. 2020 has come with a lot of struggles. 2020 has come with a lot of sadness um, sprinkled in with some happy moments. But for the most part, it hasn't been the most awesomest of the years right what has been happening and if you listen to the first podcast at the beginning of the year i said 2020 is going to be the year of releasing things that no longer serve you releasing systems that don't longer serve you it's going to be a year of changes and a year of shifts not only for the individual but for the collective the 21st breath is like the precipice. We are all going, we're all going full haul. We're going over the edge. And the changes that are going to be happening and happening is that we are shifting from the ideas of looking at looking out for just ourselves. Instead of looking out for just ourselves, we're going to be looking out for each other. We are shifting our mentality from the individual to the community, to the collective. And you see that now. You see the changes that are happening. People are supporting small businesses instead of wanting to support larger businesses. We have ideas that 50 years ago were absolutely crazy and not supported. And now we're like, yeah, if this is what is going to help us as a group, awesome. We've had ideas of, I don't want to be specific to the U.S. I'm using the U.S. as an example because it's where I'm from. So the idea of college, free college for students, um, the idea of flipping healthcare, which is a base, I believe is a basic right, um, just if shifts into what's good for the goose is good for the gander what's we have to see what is i don't think that's the right term actually good for the goose good for the gander i don't think that's it don't don't say that scratch that um what's good for the group is that not the term is not that the phrase probably not sorry again english is not my first language it's amazing i i don't stutter all the time um so we're seeing what is good for the community what is good for the collective we are seeing people in need and we're coming together and and lifting them up because we see when if we lift up one individual if we lift up the group we all come up and that's the shift that's happening and i think that's the problem that we see now that's the a lot of the tension that is happening where instead of when we think of others when we think of other people we're like yeah this is this is a positive thing i'm going to use the mask as an example and please this is not a political political statement <clears throat> um so a lot of people believe that if you wear a mask it's not only going to protect you it's going to protect others that's looking at it from a community-based perspective, right? Aside from whatever you think is happening, which I'm going to get to in a minute, um, we think, I am a mask user, I wear masks. mask, I'm not going to argue with people. And if it's, it's not just to protect myself, but it's to protect other people, it's to protect people when they have elderly family members at home. I'll wear the flipping mask. It's great because I'm a mouth breather anyway. I don't like showing my mouth because I'm like wide mouth all the time. My nose is constantly plugged up like it is right now. So that's a community-based perspective, right? Then you have those who believe that it impedes on their personal rights. 
So it's not for everybody else. It's they're thinking about what's good for themselves. And that's the tension that we're having now. And that is the shift that is happening for the 21st, this new era that we're entering into. And those who are thinking selfishly or thinking, oh, this is what's good for me or this is what worked for me, those are the people that might be might have a rougher time than those who are thinking of the community. And I'm not saying that these are the people that are going to be excluded, but these are the people that are more likely not to participate or be against or be they're going to be going against the current and they're going to struggle naturally because if this whole collective is moving toward a shift of how can I help my community how can I help the collective and this person is how can I help myself they're going to they're going to struggle they're they're going to have a rougher time than most um there is also a call to spirituality, which I think plays right into the collective because if you are a spiritually inclined person, you already know that we are all one, that we all come from the same source and we tend to be more patient with others. We tend to be more giving for others and it just it's a, a natural ability that we have, right? So removing yourself from a fear-based idea is already going to shift yourself and your mentality into the flow of what is coming in the 21st. So if you imagine it like a river, this river is going to be changing directions. It's no longer going to be just for the individual. It's going to be going for the community and for the collective. And for the most part, like I said, we have been seeing it. We have been seeing people reaching out to others we haven't we're seeing events where it's for example young people participating in government a lot of things have been sort of revealed to us the veil has been lifted and we see things for what they are um we've seen that there's been a lot of anger we've seen that there's people who are just not grounded or as centered as we originally thought. And the hope is that either, while most of us have, are already doing what we are supposed to be doing or vibrating at the frequency that we're all vibrating at, those who are more individualistic or selfish is not the word that I want to use. It's more what's in it for me or how does this affect me? Those are the groups that are going to have a really difficult time in adjusting to how things are going to start being, are starting to be. Not start, starting. It, this has already started. This is it. what we're seeing right now is the shift. This has been the transition the 21st is going to be almost like the mark for the official shift to a more collective um, consciousness. So it's not bad. It's, it's not a fearful thing. I see it as a positive thing. My my brother and I were raised very in a very similar way, but he's going through, he's processing a lot of the thing, a lot of trauma that we part- happened to us when we were younger. And while I am, I've processed it for the most part. I've started this business. I I have my message of spiritual empowerment and love and removing unnecessary fear, unnecessary fear. There's fear, there's healthy fear that keeps you safe. For example, if I'm walking in the woods and there's a likelihood of me finding a bear, I will be fearful and vigilant if I am living my life and afraid that Saturn and whatever is going to be in conjunction, I'm not going to be fearful because that's something that I have no control over. Um, Anyway, so my brother is going through this process and he is 
saying he wants to remove the fear or the anger from his life and move in a place of love, which I 100% agree with and whatever he needs, I support. But he has these very um, traditional values that I just don't necessarily adhere to, um, like these very gender specific ideas that for some people it works, for me it, it doesn't necessarily work. Um, but he's what he's doing is going inward and visiting his spirituality and visiting his emotions and trying to figure out how he can improve himself. And that is essentially what we're all doing. How can I improve myself? And in turn, once you do that, you are going to be living in a more community-based idea. So once you improve yourself, you're able to give the best version of yourself. Um, so yeah. December 21st is not a scary thing unless you are completely selfish and think that the world is out to get you and everything is me, 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 me. How does it affect me? How does it affect my, my to do, my well being? Not well being. How does it affect my. I, I keep going to the anti maskers. It's, it's, it's instead of saying, oh, this helps the community, there is science behind it. They're thinking, this stops my rights. The other thing that is happening is the, um, this is a big one. And this, this one kind of really pisses me off because I see people sharing all this misinformation about like the government and the vaccines and that there's some giant conspiracy to sterilize everybody. And while I love a good conspiracy theory, I don't think now is the time, especially when we have loved ones who are not going to be celebrating the holidays with us, when the hospitals are at max capacity. I have friends who are nurses who are really struggling. They're really, really struggling. And, and now is not the time. It isn't. I'm not going to stop talking to you or insult you, but I am going to ignore you and think that you are not in the right space at the moment. Like now is not the time, right? Um, so yeah, don't be afraid of the 21st. T today's going to be a short episode, I promise you guys. I'm sure you'll love to hear me going off on a rant on venting. So be good with yourself, continue vibrating high, continue doing your positive things, continue connecting with your spirits, continue on your spiritual journey, uh, continue taking care of yourself and your community, uh, continue sending positive energy out into the world, continue your meditation, continue drinking water, do all that stuff. Oh, Oh my God, I almost forgot. I always do that, by the way. People call me out on it where I'm like, hey, in the beginning of the episode, you said you weren't talking about this and like you didn't mention it. It's because I don't plan my episodes. It's just me dirty talking and I have no notes. So at the beginning of the episode, I said that we're doing a micro crystal healing session. By the way, if you hear water outside right now, it's because we are uh, watering our garden. Uh, if you are... I am offering a crystal healing session on my website, rememberlovehealing.com. This particular crystal session, I am including a crystal grid that has three major components. It's going to have moldavite, and moldavite is a tektite. It's essentially a, a meteorite that hit, hit at that time Czechoslovakia, currently the Czech Republic and Slovakia, and split, heated so much, turned into a glass, a green glass. <laughs> And what it does, it kind of puts your ideas and your wishes, wants, desires on almost like a fast hyperdrive. So for example, if you're looking to connect with your guides, it's going to bombard you with messages. If it, you want to look for another job opportunity, it's going to fill your inbox is going to be filled with, um, with job offers or or leads i mean you still have to work for it, you still have to go out and look for it and i'm not telling you you're just going to sit in your kitchen and somebody's going to call you and say hey this is your spare guide um it's you still work 
put work in it, but it's going to put it on, on overdrive. It's going to include rose quartz and rose quartz is going to help not only soften the effects of the mold divide a little bit so you're not overwhelmed, but it's going to amplify the love that you are receiving and the love that you are sending out. It's going to help you connect better to your community or going back to this uh, community-based thinking. It's going to help you connect to Mother Earth. It's going to soften your heart chakra. It's going to heal your heart chakra so if you have fears or if you have traumas. It's going to help you deal with those in a much softer way. It's going to help you be patient with yourself. It's like a balm for the soul. And I say that all the time. And then the court is just going to amplify the entire grid. So it's going to be uh, good for you and it's going to stay around you for for a while. And I'll, I'm planning to keep, keep the grid up for at least a good three days. So if you're interested in participating, you can be anywhere in the world. This is long distance. Afterwards, I film a video for you. I put it up, a private video for those participating. And then I also send you a private um, one card reading. Uh, so it'll be just for you. It's me emailing you, me talking to you. Whenever you ever receive a message from Remember Love Healing, it's me. This is a one woman show. So if you're interested in participating, remember lovehealing.com. Just go to healing sessions and just sign up. If there is something specific you want me to focus on, leave me a note at checkout or you can email me directly at michelle at rememberlovehealing.com um, and just let me know what you want me to, to focus on. So I hope everybody is going to have a lovely, 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 lovely weekend. I hope to see you around on my social media. And remember, please support me. Patreon.com slash Remember Love Healing. It starts at three bucks, gives you access to the community, and we can chat. We can hang out. We can post weird links. Talk about aliens. I love talking about aliens. Um, I have a really weird fear about aliens, but yet I can't help but read about it. Tell me what books you're reading. I am currently reading... I finished the last book, but now I am reading um, She Who Runs With Wolves. I think that's the title. I'm pretty sure that's the title. And it's actual books. I'm really excited instead of my e-reader. All right. Have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. And I will see you next time. Love and light. And take care of yourself and take care of each other. Bye.